I need to borrow this data and I'm going to do it with Python and Selenium. You just need to know some basic Python to follow along. My uncle asked me to add online ordering to his website. I said, okay, send me your menu. He sends me pictures of his massive menu. Uh, I said, send me a text format. He said, what's a text format? Can you grab the menu from DoorDash or something? And that's how we got here. All right, let's get into it. If you don't have Selenium installed, check out my other video in the description. I have a few lines here to load the Chrome driver and then open up a new browser. Let's run it. I'm going to maximize the window. We'll open Chrome Developer Tools. I'm going to select the Inspect tool and point it at one of the menu items. And then click on it. Notice on the Elements tab, it jump to the code behind the menu item. I'm going to expand the anchor tag. We can see the name and the price, that's what we want. It looks like if we use Selenium to target the anchor tag, we can get a list of all the menu items on this page. There are several ways for Selenium to locate elements on a web page. We can use the find element function to find one element on the page, or find elements to find a list of elements on the page. Since we are trying to get the list of items, we'll be using the find elements function. On the left here, we can see that there are several ways to locate items on the page by ID, by name, and so on. Let's take a look at our anchor tag. We can't search for ID because the ID is going to be different for each anchor, but it looks like every anchor has the same class name. So we're going to use the class name as the target. We'll grab this piece of sample code. I'm going to create a new code block. We want to use find elements. Let me rename this variable. E as in elements. Notice the squiggly lines under the word by. That means we need to import the by class. Go back up on top. This is what we need. I'm going to create another code block. I'm going to execute this. Now the squiggly lines are gone. We tell the find elements function to search by class. Now we need to give it the class. I'm going to run the code. It's good. Let's print out the number of items that we got. Hundred and seventy seven. Sounds about right. Now let's take a look at the first item to make sure we have what we want. I'm going to create a new variable named eItem or single item and set it to the first item of the list. Let's print the content of eItem. I'm going to use the get attribute function. The get attribute function allows us to get attributes such as the ID. So if I put ID here, I can get the ID of the element. The attribute that we want to get is called inner HTML. Inner HTML returns all the HTML inside the anchor tag. As you can see, the two diffs is this one and this one. So we have what we need. Now we can extract the item name using the find element function. And rename this. We want to use find element. Instead of looking at the whole browser, we want to look inside our first item. And then the class name would be this one. The text property will get us the item name. Let's run that. We have the name down here. Let's do the same thing to the price. Here's the price. Let's simulate clicking on the item by calling the click function. I'm going to put VS Code side by side with the browser. Now run the code. To get a reference to the pop-up element, we can't just use the find element function like before because there is a slight delay between clicking and the pop-up appearing. We can't let our code continue until the pop-up appears. We need to use the wait class to wait for the pop-up. 
This class will wait for a certain condition to occur before our code continues. Grab the sample code here. Let's take care of the imports. Go back up to the second block, add to our imports. Go in the code, go back down here. We'll rename this to my pop-up. The web driver wait class expects two parameters. The first one is our browser object. The second one is a timeout. Change that to five seconds. If after five seconds, the expected condition does not occur, we'll see an error. We expect the pop-up to show up pretty much instantly. So five seconds is more than enough. The until function is gonna hold here until expected condition evaluates to true. The function that we are going to use is going to be different from this one. Let's look at the options. We can see that there are many to choose from. The one that we need is visibility of the element. So when the pop-up is visible, the function returns true. The locate function expects a locator object, which is something that find element returns, but we can do this by shorthand pass in the locator object like this. Let's examine the pop-up to see how to target it. Go to my inspect tool. I'm moving the mouse around to see if I can find the element that covers the whole pop-up. Doesn't seem like I can point to it, so I'm just gonna click on the top element. I'm gonna go up the hierarchy to see if I can find the element that covers the whole pop-up. Looks like this is it. Looks like the way we can target this is by using ID. By ID. I'm going to comment out the print statements. We'll print the content of the pop-up. Use the same function as before, get attribute, execute. Notice the exception, it's a click exception. There's an arrow pointing at the problem line. So this is not working because the pop-up is already showing. Close this first. Execute. This looks like the content of the pop-up. Let me comment this out. Now I want to be able to close the pop-up. I'm going to grab one of these lines. Call it close. I want to find the X inside my pop-up. And let's take a look at what we need to pass in here. Let me inspect the X. Looks like the X is pretty straightforward. We'll look for this ID. Look for ID. Now we'll call the click function. Let me close this, run the code. You can see that the pop-up came up and then closed by itself. Up until now, we've been looking at one item. So now let's put the whole thing inside a loop. And get rid of some of these comments. We don't need this line anymore. Okay, so now if I run the code, it's gonna loop through every item, click on it, and then close it. Let's see if it works. Good, it's working. It's going through every item. I'm gonna stop it. This error is okay because it's saying that I interrupted the um, execution. Now I'm gonna create a new way to capture the data. Get the item name in there. The price, that's all we have for now. I'm gonna create another array to hold the list of all the data. At the end of the loop, I wanna add my data for one item to my list of all the items. Now let's run it. Am I interrupted? Clear the error. I'm adding another code block so we can take a look at our data list. Execute. Is the list of names and prices. This looks good. Hey folks, before we continue, it would really help me out if you can hit the like button and please consider subscribing. All right, let's keep going. Now that we can loop through every item, we can deal with the spicy indicator. We add a conditional breakpoint on the line of code right after the item name. Right click on the gutter. At conditional breakpoint e5 in e item name dot text. There's our conditional breakpoint. If I run this code in debug mode, it should stop 
on this line when it encounters e5 in the item name. And it stopped on e5. I'm going to step the code forward until after clicking. I'm going to click on step over. We can see that we have the right item. Let's see what we can use to distinguish the spicy indicator. We can see at the end of the item name, it says what's hot. We can use this word to distinguish spicy or not. If we see the word what's hot, we'll add the word spicy to our data array. Otherwise, we'll add something that says uh, not spicy. We should also split the item name apart from the item number. we we'll split it on the period after the item number. After splitting, I expect this array will have two items. The first one being the item number and the second one being the item name. Let's add that back to our array. We should also get rid of the word what's hot. Replace that with empty string. Also, we want to get rid of the extra spaces before and after the name. Let's stop the current execution, get rid of this line, and also the conditional breakpoint. Now we can execute this. Let's stop the execution. Let's see what's in our data list now. So we have our item number, item name, spicy or not, and our price. I'm going to go down to E5. And we see that E5 has the spicy indicator. So this looks good. The last thing that we need is the extra vegan meat indicator. Looks like L21 has this indicator. I'm going to use the inspect tool. What we can do is if we find this element, we can assume that the extra vegan meat option exists. Let's look at the one up top. Looks like the one up top has the same class, mint modifier type title, mint modifier type title. We can't really tell them apart. So what we should do is use find elements to find both of these and then check what the text says. We'll go to the code right after the pop-up and we use find elements. We want to do find elements inside a pop-up by class. Not every option has extras, so we have to handle the case where find elements doesn't find anything. When it doesn't find anything, it throws a no such element exception. Let's handle this case. Put the code inside a try block. We have to import the no such element exception class. Go back up here. Execute. When we encounter no such element found, We'll just say no extra. If we do find it, it could be like this, two separate options. It could be just the top, it could be just the bottom. So what we do is we loop through both elements. Look for the words extra vegan meat. Extra vegan meat. We also want to know whether it's found or not. So let's create a found variable. Start it out at false. If it is found, we'll set the found variable to true. We'll break out the loop. And then if we don't find anything, we'll also put no extra on there. Now we're ready to grab everything on this page. Execution is done. Let's check out the data list. Looks like we got everything we need. All right, folks, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments and I will try to answer as many as I can. Thanks for watching.